Ooh. Over all, over all the, I, I was Sensible really worried season. that I was going to be well out. We're all better there about, aren't we? Yeah. So, uh, John, you've gone for the, the outlier if it's such a thing for half a point for Henderson. Is that because you, you, were, you couldn't give Emery and Hendo the same rating? Yeah, it's just, it, it's difficult because I think like, Henderson, Henderson, when he played, has been brilliant, but he's had the injury problems, and it's like, which way do you go with it? Do you, yeah. do you, do you not do you dock him because he's not played and he's not been fit? But then that's not really his fault, is it? Kind yeah. of thing. Um, I th- yeah, I I think my thinking was Henderson was more consistent when he played. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chan had lower lows and higher highs. Yeah. So yeah. Chan's best game was better than Henderson's best game, but, but the, you, I know you might not have been fit and stuff, but there was a time around when he scored that one, the goal at Burnley in the build, those games around that time. Chanham was re- had been really, really struggling. But then when he played in the bigger games, he looked absolutely phenomenal. City away just springs to mind where he, he was just unbelievable. Chelsea at home, he was great. He just he, he seems to be struggling in, against the, the, the lesser teams, you know what I mean? When we, when we were struggling to break them down, he looked slow and cumbersome. Yeah. Or cumbersome, sorry, but that's that's the issue I had is that a seven might be too low, but then I thought I can't give him the same as Henderson because it wouldn't be right because yeah. Henderson was on, on bar the burn the game, Henderson's level was pretty yeah, high. Let, let's be honest with the Emery Chan stuff, and I mean we as well do these both at the same time because I think it's a worthwhile conversation because they've almost been mutually exclusive this season. One or the other. Like, you know, I mean not necessarily true. Emre Chan, because he had he scored a cut, he had that little patch of goals and he'd come in and he'd do a good job for us by getting those Crystal Palace as an example, scored a very important goal there. But he it was never a natural fit, and you're right. You know, the, the simple fact is let's rewind to January, and we were sat here going, "He's terrible." Contract negotiations, stick the contract negotiations yeah, up yeah. his ass because he's not developed. He's had a really poor season. He's not. He's not moved on. Blah 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 blah. This is. Uh, I think you like to use this. Thing, is it like recency bias or whatever? Where Emery Chan's been really good for about two months now, and it's kind of hard. I would. I would give him an eight or or more based on the Emery Chan that ended the season. But of course, Chris. It's a, it is yeah. a season. Look, you've got to you've, you've got to look at it, haven't you? As a whole season, and for for me, we've played better football with Emery Channing, and oh, sorry, with with Jordan Henderson yeah. in the side. We we just scored loads more goals. You know, um, I think Emery Chan is kind of exactly what Steve said. Actually, higher highs and lower lows. Henderson for me was an eight, nine most games and he'd have the occasional one where he, he maybe struggled a little bit yeah. but he didn't really drop his level and Ray Chan the back end of this season we probably wouldn't have got top four without him yeah. I think okay, he was yeah, he yeah. was that influential and he had a really difficult job because he's not the same player as Jordan he doesn't play in the same way the team wasn't playing as well and he stood up and was counted towards the end of the season yeah. and almost dragged us over the line you've got to remember as well we, we should take into account I know he's a DM in this but Chan has played in the other roles Yeah. so you've got to, you've got to fact, a lot of his good performances were in that role with, with someone in so he had a couple of good, good games then he with Lucas sitting behind him for example and yeah. stuff but he, again the issue with Emre in a, is I was comparing him to Henderson too much at the time, and that, that was my fault. I shouldn't have been doing that because he was slowing us down. He was taking the extra touch and stuff. But that's who he is. But you we know found I mean? a way to play exactly with we, him yeah, playing his game. Exactly. Yeah. We, it, we were trying, we were comparing him to apples and oranges, and that was unfair on our behalf. Again, his best games I think were better than Henderson's best games. Henderson just didn't have Bar again mentioned it. Bar Burnley, but Henderson was poor. He never reached the lows. Chan, like at one point, was like, just like, why is this lad even on the pitch? He's yeah. having an absolute shocker. That's where we are. But by all means, now I mean, I'd be, I'd be throwing underground at him yeah. to sign a new contract now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I, I think the thing with it as well is, is that with Emre, the reason it's difficult to split them is because when you look at Emre, he was poor when he first came in, but he was still scoring loads of goals, which is, you know, you can't discount that. But then I think. Uh, he kind of does the things that we've we've missed for a long time. You know, like he's obviously got a great shot on him, but things like just blocking people and like you know doing like very European fouls. And when stuff. we've needed that to to really take the fight to a team, that Emre Chan is it's got that all over him, hasn't it? He yeah. fucking loves a battle. And those games where people have tried to dominate our midfield, he's he's Booted stepped them. up and he's strengthened. And he's become a better footballer for being in those and, battles. Like and so. the other thing as well, just quickly, I think is that. Only going off what I've heard in like the last few weeks and obviously throughout the season is that he, I think Henderson deserves a bit of a mention for the fact that obviously he's kind of grown into being the captain as well. And even when he's not been on the pitch, um, you know, you're, you're hearing loads of stories about him being man the dressing room and like you know taking people under his wing kind of thing. So I think he probably deserves a mark, a bit of a mark just for that, just because he's 
he, for him, him himself, he's grown into that role. You know, he wasn't really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've noticed on the on, on Emery channel that how much Jürgen talks to him and goes over and post match as well. Like he's all, he, he's the one he spends most time with. You know, so it'd be interesting to see how that develops going forward. But <laughs> ready? Okay. On three, three, two, one. From the start that we had, we should have been finishing the tire up. He was the senior pro in those games. Yeah. He was one of the senior pros in the in the Plymouth games and in the, the Wolves games and stuff. And what did he do? He just didn't do anything. And, and then, like I say, he's, he's mad as a box of frogs. 